The term lumber hooker is applied to a vessel that was, for the most part, dedicated to carrying lumber from the sawmills to the ports where the product would be sold along the Great Lakes. In 1834, the Williams family established the first sawmill in the Saginaw Valley. They were followed closely by Emerson, and thereafter the lumber industry began to take root. What was needed was a ready form of transportation to send that product to markets, primarily the cities of Chicago and Buffalo. At first, the lumber hookers were small schooners that took on the job of hauling the lumber in the 1860s. Chicago became the major consumer of lumber, and it was from that city that the first appearance of the term lumber hooker was published. It was used to set apart the schooners dedicated to the lumber business from those that did the serious business, like carrying grain. No one in the 1860s could imagine how huge the lumber industry would become and how soon that expansion would take place. Immediately after the Civil War, the quantity of cut lumber in the Saginaw District was at more than 250 million board feet. By 1873, it was more than 621 million board feet. And by its peak in 1888, that number would top a billion board feet. In the Chicago district, those numbers were three times greater at the same time. In fact, Chicago went from being a hungry consumer of lumber to a nationwide distributor of lumber. As a result, the hunger for lumber quickly outgrew the ability of the little wind-grabbing sailboats to meet the demand. Thus, the method of towing strings of those schooners with deep-water tugs began to gain popularity around 1862. The tow method was still not enough to fit the need of the nation's hunger for lumber. That was fine, because before the tow method ever got started, steam-powered propeller lumber vessels that could both tow barges and also carry huge lumber cargoes were already coming along. Constructed at East Saginaw and launched in the summer of 1867, the 120-foot-long Hilton could easily be considered the prototype of future lumber hookers. She was built from the keel up as a lumber boat by Chelsea Wheeler. Her intended port of call was Chicago, and her routes were to be crisscrossing Lake Michigan. As the dedicated steamer was being introduced, a crossbreed between the deep water tug and the full sized steam lumber hooker was developed. It was monikered the Rabbit Boat and had all accommodations aft and no forecastle cabin. Still, the demand for lumber grew, but at the same time, the lake's passenger traffic was nearly wiped out by the growing railroads plus the recession of the 1870s. So, small passenger steamers, such as the Oswegatchie and the Northern Queen, were cut down into lumber hookers. Although Oswegatchie kept her name, the Northern Queen was renamed Robert Holland. Scores of these idled passenger steamers were likewise cut down into lumber hookers. From sailing vessels to schooner barges to steamers between 1884 in 1885, the estimate was that there were nearly 500 lumber hookers working the lakes. The big lumber companies were clear-cutting the forests of the Great Lakes region, as if the supply of lumber would never end. Yet as far back as the late 1870s, warnings had been published that the forests would be exhausted at this rate within 20 years. The decline came exactly as predicted, and along with it, came the decline of the lumberhookers. In the years prior to World War I, 
the once common sight of a wooden steamer towing a schooner barge and both having their decks stacked high with lumber, became a rarity. Remarkably, some lumber hookers survived into the mid-1920s. One such vessel was the Robert C. Went, which was launched in 1888 as a lumber hooker and remained at work in her original configuration until the summer of 1925, when she burned on the St. Clair River. Here's an image of her crew, circa 1900. As the lumber hookers disappeared, likewise the use of the term lumber hooker faded from all but history books. The exact origin of the term is unclear. One theory is that it was a slang that referred to the early schooners which used onboard booms and lines to hook the lumber and move it from their cargo holds. Another theory is that the term is based on prostitution, where sailors compared that shoreside business to the lumber boats that tramped around the lakes, going to the lumber camps, and following the sawmills. The exact root of the term, lumber hooker, is up to you, the viewer, to decide for yourself.